Oh, I missed you. It was such a long holiday weekend. Did you get what you were hoping for? More importantly, did you stay warm? God, was it cold up here in Michigan. I'm John Zadar, your host. This is Tuesday. It's December 27th, and you are watching On Top and Hot, where we like to discuss hot OTC and penny stocks. Love that heat, huh? <laughs> I'm a day trader. I love to trade penny stocks. The great thing about penny stocks is they're on every single market. They're on the OTC, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. Because a penny stock is nothing more than any stock under five bucks. That's the only criteria. And they are on every single market. So I love it. Now, most of the stocks we look at are on the OTC market. Matter of fact, that is some of my research right there. That's news all from the OTC market over the last eight days. You got your newest news up at the top, your oldest news down at the bottom. And there's some prime news in there, folks. Like I say in every show, you got mergers, acquisitions, bankruptcies, uplistings, dividends, the kind of news you're looking for. And if you haven't got time to go through the news every day like I am, Guess what? I did it for you. Eight days worth right there. Enjoy. Now, when I do my research on an OTC stock, this is my number one site, the otcmarkets.com website. This is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. Folks, that's going to save you a ton of time. I know you're looking for share structure. I know you're looking for filings. Why run around the internet looking for this stuff when it's posted here specifically for investors to find? Make your research easier. Start here. You can always go to the internet if you can't find what you're looking for. So let's take a look how our OTC market finished today. That is not looking good. Please let it bump. Please let it bump a little bit on the share volume, but that is it. E gads. I think this is worse than last week. Our dollar volume, I know, has dropped. We're at 1.2 billion. I think we were at 1.3 before. Folks, I honestly believe that Tesla sold more stock today than $1.2 billion worth. So Tesla all by themselves sold more shares volume-wise in dollars than we did on the entire OTC market. It's stifling. Share volume, we did just bump up from 6 billion to 6.3 billion and I'm not excited. We really do need to see our share volume get up over 10 billion. That is literally a second gear. The market starts to move a lot faster. So yeah, sitting at 6.3 is nothing to get excited about. And our trades were under 250,000, which has been our low average for a very long time. So this is not good either. So no, the market hasn't got a whole lot of flair or excitement for us. Thank God I've got some stocks to give us some encouragement. I'm going to show you some stocks that were running today, had some big news, and I'm going to teach you where to find stocks that could give you the hugest gains you've probably ever had. Maybe. Let me show you what I got. All right, let's get this party started. We're gonna look at some big news about two companies on the OTC market that are considering a potential merger. And both of these companies have already been in the investor's eyes. They've been catching a lot of attention these last few months. First one is ticker CRTD, Created Inc. The other one is GTI Global Tech Industries. You probably heard about both of them. Now, what's been really being spoke about here recently is that both are under serious short attack. They have had the prices up to eight, nine, ten dollars but they have been really pushed down by people shorting the stock. Now, shorting stock means that investors get to borrow shares for free. They just go to the broker and they borrow shares that maybe you or I own, but we're not selling. We're just holding on to them. They borrow those and then go sell them and they get money and they put them in their pocket. Well, they hold some of those shares and when the price starts to fall, they sell to push the price down lower and they sell more to push the price down lower. That's how they're shorting it. And when it gets really low, they then buy back all those shares they borrowed because they got to give them back and they put them back at a cheaper price. Now, nobody over on that end cares, but the shorter just made all the money from what he sold them for to what he bought them for, and he gets to keep that difference right there. Well, both of these companies are being seriously shorted, but both companies believe that there are naked shorts that are involved here. Now, naked shorts are borrowing nothing and selling nothing and acting like it's something, and it actually pulls the price down. There are synthetic shares that don't exist. It is illegal, it is against the law, and they believe that this is happening. And both companies have hired legal representation to take care of this. They're trying to get to the bottom of it. 
Both companies are trying to build shareholder value. They're trying to give dividends of one sort or another. GTII tried to give a digital dividend. This company is involved in a lot of different types of businesses. They buy gold and they process it to resell it internationally over in Dubai. They've got a, an agreement with a blockchain platform so they can sell NFTs that is backed by artwork, real artwork. It is signed by Picasso. They bought it. And they were going to give us dividends with that artwork as the investments backing. Well, they couldn't give us those dividends because FINRA has no way to give a digital dividend. So we're still trying to figure that out. Then over here with Created, Created is doing a spin out with OG Collection. This is part of their company that they're going to put onto the NASDAQ as its own company. And guess what? We get free shares in that company, a dividend. So both companies are working real hard to get their prices up and they've been having a real hard time doing it. And I think this is gonna help. This is the news that came out today. Global Tech Industries Group and created begin formal merger discussions. That's what it says right here that Global Tech Industries and created today announced that they have formally begun discussions to explore synergies, including a potential merger. Both companies expect that their stocks will be retired and exchanged for shares in a new company with new CUSIP with the intent to eventually be listed on the national exchange. Created intends on completing its spinoff of its media subsidiary OG Collection and GTII remains committed to its acquisition of 1-800-LAW-FIRM. They've been trying to get a hold of this acquisition, 1-800-LAW-FIRM. They're just trying to finish it off, waiting for an audit. So everybody is doing things to grow right now, but the price isn't going up because they haven't had any real strong catalysts and the shorters keep pushing it. So here's what happens. If the stock gets enough value, if the investors see it's worth more than the price, they'll push the price up. And if we're aware there's shorters out there, we know that if the price gets too high, if we push it too high, the shorters get scared because they may have bought it at a dollar and they pushed it way down here to 50 cents. And then we start pushing it back up and it goes to a dollar 10, a dollar 50, dollar 80. Well, now the shorters have to buy it back at a dollar 80. They only bought it for a buck or they sold it for a buck. They got all that money, but now they got to spend money to put those shares back. And there is no limit on their losses. It could go to $3, $8, $20, and they would have to cover all of that and buy them all back, which helps us. They're buying shares, which pushes the price up and hurts them. That is called the short squeeze. And that's what everybody's been looking for for this. GTI and created, and this could do it. It absolutely could. Now let's take a look at just a few bullets about each of these companies. GTII has rocketed up to highs of $8.97 not too long ago. Uh, this was back in October that this came out, so I'm not too sure how clear this is, but you'll get a picture here. There is a single short from one person or one hedge fund, whatever, on GTII that has 100 million shares shorted. Somebody borrowed a million shares and got to sell them and take all the money or use them to sell and push the price down. One million for one short. They tell us down here that the company tried to lower their warrant price. A warrant is a coupon. You buy a warrant, it says, look, as soon as the price hits this level, you're allowed to buy a share of our stock at a discounted price, a big discount. So maybe you got into the stock at 10 cents, they've got a warrant that says when it hits 25 cents, you can buy a share for 30 cents. Well, you're not gonna use it as soon as it hits 25 cents. But when it gets up to say $1.50, you may want to cash in that warrant and get a share of stock super cheap for 30 cents and turn around and sell it and get all that profit right now. Well, that's what they were doing. They lowered the price on the warrant so that people could cash them in. This was another shareholder value that they tried to do. And at that time, they had a float of over 40 million shares. Stop. I just told you that you had one short with over 100 million shares and the float is only 40 million. That's the problem. You start having more shares shorted than are actually real and that's what makes it a problem. There can't be more deficit than there is assets. Something's wrong here. So they're trying to fix this and I don't know if they're going to do it legally or if they're going to get the SEC to back them up or what. 
The company's subsidiaries and affiliates include intellectual properties, proprietary systems and trade secrets in the bioscience, green tech and global health technologies, among other new and emerging businesses. GTII is in the process of animating a digital platform formed together with Alt 5 Sigma for the purpose of acquiring fine art and other collectibles that will be tokenized and eventually issued to its shareholders as tokenized value dividends. This undertaking signifies a new and revolutionary method for offering value to GTII shareholders. They want to give us dividends, but they can't find out how to do it. FINRA can't do it. They have no way of working with digital dividends. They want to give us tokens. Well, this is the stock market and the stock market doesn't know how to do that yet. So there is a lot of technology right now being worked on so that companies can give different types of incentives, different type of dividends that aren't just stock or cash related. And they tell us down here that one of the pieces of artwork they got actually has Picasso's signature on it. It's numbered, it's been validated, it's been appraised, and that's what they tokenize. They give you a token, you have so many tokens that added together equal the value of that piece of art. And they only sell that many tokens, so you know your token is worth that much at least. So let's take a look at some information about CRTD. CRTD used to trade over $10 per share on the NASDAQ before it was delisted just back in September. And there are indications that created is heading right back to the NASDAQ, which would be excellent because you know GTI is going with her. The company has also taken legal action against a massive short position, which is about 200 to 300 million shares right now. And they're doing that by doing the spin out of OG collection. This is going to give us a dividend in the company once it gets up onto the NASDAQ. They are also working for a dual listing onto the blockchain exchange upstream where no short selling is allowed. The company just reported an increase in revenues by 38% year over year and they expect to be doing about eight to $12 million worth of business next year. Now the company has four subsidiaries, created labs, created partners, created ventures and created studios and they each focus in on a particular niche. Now here recently they just came out with a new app, a new uh, Android iOS app called Vocal and this gives creators an opportunity to monetize their content in a lot of different ways. They tell us down here some more information about what the company is up to. Gross revenues for the third quarter was 2.9 million. The company has completed the rollout of the new Vocal app for both iOS and Android. Following its acquisition of Orbit, the new social stock trading app created successfully completed development for its beta release. The company completed its acquisition of healthy breakfast food brand Brave, marking the fourth addition to its consumer product good brand portfolio and created continues to partner with leading brands including Equinox, Airwan, Ali, and Urban Outfitters. So what was the relative volume around created today? Let's see what we got over here. Uh, not much more. She normally does 1.1 million. Today she did 1.3 million. That's it. And what did GTII do for her volume? A bigger increase, absolutely. She went from 1.7 to 5 million. So you've got roughly three times her normal volume here. She finished the day at $1.60 with 55% gains. And she's got all her green ticks, looks real good. Uh, CRTD finished the day at about 86 cents with about 23% gains and she's got all of her green ticks as well. So these two companies are coming together. They've each got their own thing and they're going to make the other company better with what they've got. As they meld together, they're going to find all these synergies which should increase revenues. Let's go take a look at both charts. All right, let's jump on into this, folks. We got both tickers up here, CRTD and GTII. And of course, we're gonna be doing our charting on Think or Swim. This is a free trading platform TD Ameritrade gives you for free just for signing up for their free trading account. And all you gotta do is keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like for free. <laughs> All right, let's start off with CRTD first. CRTD, six month, four hour chart. She has been falling for four, four and a half months here. Hit a low bubble of about four and a half cents here at, uh, 
oh, the second week of October, and she took off. Now, I couldn't find any catalysts on this day. There are catalysts through the next 40 days as she continues to run, but nothing here to show why it started. But she started at about four and a half cents, and about 40 days later, she hit $1.74. Folks, you are talking 3,500% gains. Every $100 bill you had invested down here got you 3,500 bucks up here if you sold. She did fall very quickly. She crushed every single SMA, bounced off of a 200, and then has been working off of that 200 for a while here. And just now, she has finally gotten over that 50-day SMA again. The volume is consistent, but I can't say it's any stronger right now than any other time. Our technicals, well, they're not looking bad, actually. We got a crossover imminent right there on our PPO, which is a lot like the MACD. Read it the same. Our MACD is pushing off of its line, just crossing the signal line right now, and our RSI has just touched 60. Looking pretty decent on the four hour. Let's look at our 20 day one hour under the 200 this entire time okay almost the entire time we did have a pop right here when she hit this high bubble shocked everybody because it fell right down to that low bubble of 41 cents from a dollar 14 and she's gotten back up over that 50 day SMA and has been struggling with that right now and is now pushing up to get on top of this 200. We would love to see her get on top of that 200. And the technicals look like she could do it. Every single one of these is pointing up right now. So they all look really good. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. All right. She's got a lot of volatility, doesn't she? She's wrestling with her 200 here and then lost it really hard. Fell down to 53 cents here, worked her way up through the next day, took a jump back up onto the 200, and now she is surging and climbing. And with the news that has just come out, I wouldn't expect her to stop climbing anytime soon. Now, how far is she gonna run? Well, it all depends on the sort of news that they give us. They've got a lot of synergies. They can give us audits. They can move up to the NASDAQ. They can actually close the deal. All of these are going to be catalysts. So definitely keep your eye on CRTD. Right now, she is pushing up. You can see all of our technicals. We're at, gee whiz, just about 70 here on our RSI. We have just had a bounce off on our MACD pushing up. Our PPO is pushing up nicely. And here, our ADX, which we don't talk about too much. This is all about trend continuation. This up here. You see, we had a rise and then a fall. And then it starts rising. Well, this line changes every time this changes. And once this starts going a direction, your line starts going one direction. And if this does not change direction, it's not about if it's pointing up or pointing down. We don't care about that. All we care is that this line is straight. This is my ADX. As long as that line continues in the same direction, it means the trend is continuing the same direction. So my line is not changed here. That means my uptrend is going to continue. Everything looks good on the five day, five minute. Definitely worth a watch. All right, let's jump on over to GTII, which got the lion's share of the gains today. So we are looking at a six month, four hour chart for GTII. Had a low bubble in this low right here of 43 cents. Lots of volume came in. She was here at 75 cents. In about 10 days, 12 days, from September 21st to October 3rd, that's when she hit this high of $8.97. In 10 days, she went approximately 1,200%. That means, I'm gonna reiterate this, folks, for every $100 bill you had invested down here, you could cash in for almost $1,200 up here if you sold it. She did fall back to about $6.60, hung around this area for a while, and then with a lot of volatility, fell all the way to the floor, right back to where she started from. And right now, she's picking up a lot of momentum. She is curving right up around. It was, what, Friday? She actually got up over that 50-day SMA, and with the news today, she is pushing up and going forward, not looking back at all. The volume has been increasing over these last five days, and our technicals are screaming right now. Every single one of them are pushing up. You can't go wrong if your oscillators are pushing up. 20-day, one-hour chart. All right, she was 
completely under the 200-day SMA every day until today. However, she has been beelining for that 200 for the last four days. She crossed today with a mighty speed and is not even looking back. Technicals, they are better than the four-hour. All of them are even stronger and higher. Five-day, five-minute. Ooh, that's a nice run. She's got some bounces going through the last four days, but she is on top of her 200 and pretty much on top of her 50. Looks like the 50 is what she is showing her respect to as she's making this climb. End of the day. Look at this. We got a high bubble at the end of the day for $1.85. She did have a small pullback, but bounced right back up and is pretty much holding her gains at the end of the day. Technicals look exactly like that. Looks like she's holding her gains. I can't tell by the technicals if she wants to go up or down. But between the shorts, which if we keep pushing this price up, they're going to be forced to buy. That's going to force the price up. You're just adding fuel to the fire. When they start buying, the price goes up even more. And then more shorters get scared and they start buying. So you've got that going for it. But even if you take the shorters and put them aside, you've got two companies here on the QB with financials that are being audited, both in business, both making money, coming together, trying to give us dividends. Dividends. Both companies are trying to do this. So just on their own merits, this should rise. Well, I say this. We got two companies here merging into one, and I don't know what the new company's name is going to be. I don't know what the new ticker is going to be. We don't even know that the merger is actually going to happen. They're just talking about a potential merger. But GTII looks like it wants to continue growing. CRTD looks strong, but isn't catching as much as this one. And both of them are short to the hill. So there's a lot going on for both companies. I would put both companies on my watch list for one reason or another. We're now going to take a look at a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is Ellis, ticker E-L-Y-S, Ellis Game Technology. This is a online sports betting casino business. And they've been doing business in countries around the world, but not yet here in the U.S., well, they just had news today. That's going to change. They finished today at 37 cents with over 111% gains. Now, when we talk about a major exchange stock, you do have to worry about the price if it's under a dollar. They have what's called a minimum bid price requirement on the major exchanges, meaning your price cannot go under a dollar and stay there for too long. If they stay under a dollar for too long, they'll get a warning. You have to get your price up over a dollar and stay there for 10 to 20 consecutive days or you're going to get kicked off and thrown down to the OTC. And this has been happening a lot. So, you want to make sure that that is all good by going to their disclosures, looking at 8Ks and seeing if they have any warnings that have been issued to them. I haven't seen any yet. So, so far, so good. So, what does this company do? Well, they tell us here that the company is a premier leisure betting technology company providing regulated online and land-based gaming and sports bet wagering through licensed subsidiaries throughout Italy and on software as a service basis in 12 countries around the world. The company offers its clients a full suite of leisure gaming products and services such as sports betting, virtual sports, online casino, poker, bingo, lottery, interactive games and slots, as well as providing Ellis Game Board an innovative betting platform. So what was the relative volume today around their big news? Big? Whoa, that is a nice jump. That's roughly 55 to 60 times their normal volume, jumping from 1.6 million up to over 92 million. Whoa! Share structure. All right, these are always hard to find, but this one's pretty darn close. We are right around 21 million shares for the float, which isn't a bad float at all. Financials for this company. Well, you know they're making money gambling. Gambling is one of those sin stocks. A sin stock is like cigarettes, cannabis, gambling, uh, entertainment, 
things we do, even if times are rough, we need a life. We need to have some stress-free entertainment. So gambling always seems to be in business, no matter what the economics or world conditions. And they're making good money. At the end of last year, December 2021, they did $45 million. And what's great about that, they didn't have to pay anything for it. Look, they kept every single penny. That's what gambling's about. You don't need a manufacturer to make pieces. You don't have to buy any materials. You really don't even need any man hours. It's all digital. So you make lots of money and don't have to pay anything for it. Let's take a look at our disclosures over here. See if we have anything current. We do have an S1 that came out a few weeks ago. I did look at this. This is a public offering. They're going to be selling more shares and more warrants on the open market. We don't like that. So jumping on over to our news. Now I saw the stock running first thing this morning and I put information out there online about it, but I couldn't find any news because all of this news is old. This goes back to 2019 and nothing more current. I forgot to scroll down. Don't you forget. Come down here, there's more information. And this is where the news is that came out today. This is what it tells us. Ellis Game Technology and Cloak Book DC granted license to open Sportsbook in Washington DC. And that's what you got here. You have a joint venture between Ellis Game Technology and Cloak Book DC. They have been granted a Class B joint venture sports wagering operator license to commence Sportsbook operations. A soft launch is expected ahead of the busy New Year Eve sports weekend with first wagers planned at the Cloak Room and over under Sportsbook Rooftop Lounge at 4 p.m. on Thursday, December 29th. They tell us up here they've actually got a little second company that comes along with this. So they got two companies that are going to be working with sports betting in Washington, D.C. We are delighted to have been granted the first joint venture license with our partners at Cloakbook to commence a sports wagering services within Cloakroom Gentlemen's Club and the Over Under Rooftop Lounge, our second small business sports book installation in Washington, D.C. And that's what it's all about. They're coming to America. They're already in 11, 12 countries around the world one way or another, but America is just like cannabis. Every single state now has the right to decide if they want sports gambling, if they want casino gambling, if they even want it online. Every state gets to make that decision. In Washington, NDC is the first one to help this company get in here. Let's go take a look at that chart for Ellis. Are we sure Ellis is a NASDAQ stock? Because that sure looks like an OTC chart to me. Six months ago, we had a high of $2.40, and it looks like five days ago, we had a low bubble of 11 cents. She has been under the 200 all of this time, except uh, seven days ago, we had a breakthrough, but she came right back down, even fell further than where she started, hit that low, and right now, Friday and Tuesday, she has been pushing up hard. She has broke her 200-day SMA, really pushed up high here, got up to 50 cents, and has fallen back to 32 cents, still sitting above her 200-day SMA. The last two days, the volume is starting to come in, and whoa, look at our technicals. Our technicals have exploded in strength right now. We had crossovers, we have surges up, everything is on fire. Looks real good on the four-hour chart. 20 day, one hour. There's our one breakthrough. That wasn't a bad break, but boy, like I said, she came right back down, hit that low bubble and is working her way back up. And she has kept way more than 50% of her gains. If I take, and this is real simple if you don't want to use your Fibonacci, which you could use, you can draw a line from where a surge starts. Right here is where I see the surge starting. And then a line up at the top. And then just eyeball it. Find the middle. Don't try to line up to anything. You can do this mathematically or you can just eyeball it. Close enough is good enough. So I'm going to go right about there. So we are looking to see if more than 50% of what was thrown on the table is kept. You want to see 50% or more. And this is perfect. I mean, I don't know if my line's perfect, but she's sitting right there next to the 50% mark on top of it. Now, I don't care if it's underneath or on top. As long as it's up against that line, I feel confident that she's not going to fall anymore. Now, it's not a guarantee. It's probability. 
you keep more than 50%, chances are you're not going to fall. You're going to start climbing again. And this has got some big news. Gambling is big money. You just saw they made $45 million last year and didn't have to pay one penny out. That is good, good business. Technical is on our one hour. She is starting to pull back. You can see everything is starting to turn around and fall right now. Five day, five minute. So we had a jump yesterday. That was a pretty nice jump, wasn't it? From 13 cents up to 28 cents. That was over a hundred percent jump. I don't know why. And then it came back down. Looks like it kept, uh, oh boy, I don't know, maybe a 15, 20% it kept. And then today she took off early. She took off before the bell rang at about uh, 10 to nine. She came on the market. Geez, what was the price when she hit the market? She came on here at about 32 cents. 32 hit 50 cents and has been rolling downhill ever since. And she looked like she was gonna break that 50% mark. She was gonna keep falling and if she did, she would have come down to her 200 at least. But she did turn around, put herself back up here on that 50% line jumped on it, jumped on it, jumped on it, and is now pushing off of it on top of her 50-day SMA. That looks good. Our technicals, everything is just starting to turn now. The only thing that doesn't look great is our RSI, which is funny because I see it going up here and the RSI is falling. And in case you didn't know it, the RSI is the price line. If you take all these bars and turn them into a line, that line would look exactly like this line. They are one and the same. So I find it interesting that we have a divergence here that this is pushing down and this is pushing up. Big news, company makes big money. Gambling is getting hot in America. This is their first stop out of 50 states. They got, well, Washington DC isn't even a state. So they still got 50 states to tap into, plus they got Washington DC as a bonus. All right, this next stock we're taking a look at had some huge gains today, just gigantic. And I told you, I was gonna show you how you could find stocks that could make you gains bigger than you've ever made before. And this is a perfect example of one. Now don't get ahead of me here. We're gonna be looking at the warrant for ticker DSAQ. That ticker is DSAQW. Now DSAQ is a SPAC. A SPAC is a special purpose acquisition company. This is a company that comes onto the market blank. They have nothing. They have no business. They're generating no revenues. What they've got is a lot of money and a ticker. They're looking to make a deal. Normally a private company that wants to go public. Now when you buy into a SPAC, the shares are $10 a share and they remain $10 a share. That is to say they're worth $10 until the company closes a deal. Now this company hasn't closed a deal and you can see she's at $10.27. Well, yeah, we can bid on them, but if this company fails to close a deal within the specified period of time, which is normally 18 to 24 months, we don't lose our money. No, there's a money back guarantee with SPACs. You didn't know that, did you? They will give you back $10 for every share you bought, which is what you paid for them. Unless you came in today and you bought them at $10.27. Well, if the company fails to close a deal in the right time period, you're only gonna get $10. You're gonna lose that 27 cents. But if you got lucky and bought them at $9 and they fail, you're gonna get $10 for every share, even though you bought them at nine. Now, if the company's running out of time, they can ask for an extension, and that's what happened. Now, the big deal here is, folks, is that the stock won't move when news comes out, but the warrant does. Look at this. She finished the day at four cents with 6,566% gains. I know I probably don't have to do this again, but I'm going to. For every $100 bill that you would have invested yesterday into this company, you would have had $6,566. Wow, unbelievable. So why did this run so hard? Well, I'm gonna show you something here, folks. This is a page you can get over here at Robinhood. They show you splits, they show you up listings, they also show you liquidations. That is what it is called when a SPAC fails and they gotta give money back. Glass House Acquisition Corps was liquidated, gave back $10 per share. KKR Acquisition, liquidated, gave back just a little over $10. 
Our XR acquisition failed and liquidated, gave back $10. There's lots of these companies failing and people are really upset. They've had their money tied up for 18 to 24 months and they're getting absolutely nothing for their money. They're just getting their money back and that really doesn't make anyone happy. I mean, it could be worse, but that's not why you invested the money. Well, take a look at the news today. This came out for Direct Selling Acquisition Core. Direct Selling Acquisition announced today that its board of directors has elected to extend the date by which the company has to consummate a business combination from December 28th to March 28th. Folks, they had one foot in the grave. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow, this company was going to be on that list I just showed you, liquidating, giving back $10 to every person for every share. But look, I learned something here. I didn't realize this. This happens when an extension is bought. They just don't get permission. They have to pay for it. In connection with the extension, the company sponsor, DSAC Partners, has notified the company that it intends to deposit an aggregate of $2.3 million, representing an additional 10 cents per share, into the company's trust account on or before December 28, 2022. The extension provides the company with the additional time to complete its initial business combination. They bought time from us. Now the shares are worth $10.10. They've gotten themselves another three months. Now, I don't think they just threw $2.3 million into that trust fund because they don't get that back. That's coming to their investors now if they fail. So hopefully they've got something brewing behind the scenes. And I wanted to show you this too, just to let you know, I had jumped into the filings back here and this 8K, and this 25 NSE both say the same thing, that the warrants were at a price that was so low they were considered worthless, so they were gonna be pulled and yanked off of the market. These just came out at the end of November and two weeks ago here in December. But you see it still here, and now they've bought an extension we don't see a filing that says anything else, but I'm presuming. So what I'm basically saying here is not to invest in the stock I'm talking about right now, but to look for these SPACs that are at the end of their line that are asking for extensions. And you'll see those extensions come up in 8Ks or news presses. As soon as you see someone granted an extension, the stock the $10 stock is not going to move. It's going to be the warrants and the warrants are cheap. They're always very, very cheap. And with a little bit of volume, how much volume did this stock get today? She normally does 16,000 shares a day. Today she did just over a half a million. Just, just over a half a million and got over 6,500% gains. You wanna see the chart? I know I do. We are looking at the warrant for Direct Selling Acquisition Core. This is ticker DSAQW. Six month, four hour chart running downhill the entire time. Six months ago, she was at 28 cents and at the end of November, she was at triple zero two. Whoa, the floor is triple zero one. You can't go any lower. So there's no wonder why the major exchanges said these were worthless and should just be thrown away. Well, things have changed. We got a nice bounce going right now with a lot of volume coming in. Well, look at that RSI. She jumped from 25 to 68. We do have a strong push towards the signal line on the MACD and I love this setup. Whenever you see the blue line coming down and the red line coming up on our PPO and ADX like that, you know the price is falling. When you see them start spreading apart like this, you know the price is rising and that's what we see. So things look really well, they look like they're changing right now on the four hour chart. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Uh, well, she's climbing strong and she's got some strong technicals, but there really isn't a lot of information there. I'd rather look at the five day, five minute. <laughs> Not a whole lot of information there either. But remember, she was only selling 16,000 shares a day. And if I remember correctly, I do want to go back. Uh, her last trade day was on the 16th. Today is the 27th. On the 16th, she was down there at triple zero six. And today she ran up to four cents. Oh my God, folks. So you are looking at 6,566% uh, gains. Looks like she opened up and fell. 
She fell from uh, a penny. She fell down to double zero four seven. Bounced back up, went straight across for a little while, and then the rest of the day, climb, climb, climb. Now, do I think she's still going to climb? I don't think so, but that's really not why I'm showing it to you. I want you to realize that there are lots of SPACs failing right now, and not all of them want to fail. Some of them have deals that are close. They just need more time, and they're willing to pay for that time. So if you can keep up with news presses about SPACs, if you can keep up with filings about extensions on time, you could catch one of these very easily. It's not the $10 SPAC we're investing in. It's the penny stock of the SPAC. And the sooner you get that news, the sooner you're going to get the cheapest price possible so that you get the biggest gain possible. You like it? Well, I think you got a pretty nice selection of stocks there today. You got a nice handsome deal between GTII and Created, CRTD. These companies have got potential to make money, but more importantly, they are heavily shorted, and we never know when the line's gonna cross that the shorters start buying up real fast, and that price skyrockets. Definitely worth your attention. Then we got Ellis. Come on, folks, gambling is always big money, and this is the first step into the USA. I'm sure they're going to start sprouting off into every area that they possibly can, and they're making good money. And last but not least is the warrant. No, don't invest in that warrant. Take the lesson from it. Go find SPACs that are about ready to jump into the grave. They got a week left. They got 10 days. Just read the news, read the filings, read Twitter. Just try to get as much information as you can. It'll be worth your while if you can catch one, right? Remember folks, DD is like treasure hunting. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.